1985 Defender 90. I promised a lot of people uh, I'd give them more pictures in a video. So this is the video I'm putting together. I'm in Ireland right now. The Defender should be back in America according to shipping schedule sometime in the beginning of July. It takes about two weeks to ship from the Dublin port. Um, 1985, I've got uh, brand new tires on it. You can see with the treads down here. Um, four brand new tires. I've also got a spare tire for the back, but the spare tire is currently uninflated, so you would probably need to get a new spare tire. Then I've got over on this side, there are steps going into it on both the driver and passenger side. As you can see, it's a right-hand drive vehicle, so yeah, you can you can drive these in the states. There's at least a handful of them from what I was looking it up, so that's not a problem. I'm gonna have it titled and registered in the state of Ohio. Since it's over 25 years old, that means it's easier for me to import because it doesn't have to uh, be regulated by the um, emissions or the, there's a second one. Um, I forget what it is, but they don't have to be regulated. I'll include them in the email, but since it's a vintage car, it doesn't have to be regulated by it, so it'll pass the emissions test because it doesn't have to take one. Vintage tax on this thing in the US is 300 and I think I got a quote for $45 per year, so that's nice. Um, we've got, uh, there is some surface rust here, you can see, uh, different surface rust here, on here in the seat. And it is a 1985, so I mean, it's not completely rust free, but you can see from the body, the whole body of itself is aluminum. So because it's aluminum, there's not body rust. Then you've got these kind of, right here is a plastic covering the wheel, I don't know, wheel arches I guess you'd call them, and then this is a plastic wheel arch here, and then the body's aluminum, then you've got the steel plating on the front here. Um, I've got all the lights that work, you, technically since it's a Defender, this front window, if you wanted to, it could fold down. I've never done it, um, but it's got the hinges here for it. Technically Defenders, the great thing about them, if you wanted to, you could turn it into a pickup truck, so everything comes apart. Again, I haven't done it, it hasn't been done to this truck, but you could do it if you wanted. Two, one. So I'm gonna pop the, the hood here so I can show you the engine. So recently I had over 1,900 euros, that's like $2,100 worth of repairs done to the engine. Um, so that it included as well a brand new timing belt and I have the receipt for all the repairs that were done. They uh, fixed some gaskets. Um, I've got a whole list of things that they did, a water pump. Uh, I did some repairs myself as well. I did a fuel filter, I did an air filter, I did the glow plugs, it's a diesel engine, 2.5 liter, uh, five speed, four cycle diesel engine. It's got power steering, 1985, that's pretty rare. The reason it has power steering is because it came from England, so. Also, originally this engine was a gas petrol, they call it over here, gas engine. So at some point they transferred over to a diesel. I don't know exactly when that was. So the speedometer has 103,000. I think I had said 95,000 miles and I was I was wrong. It has 103,000 miles. I don't know why I thought it was 95, but it has 103,000 miles on it. That's not all with this engine. I don't know when the engine was transferred over, but this is a diesel engine that we have in it now. It's a uh, turbo. You can see the turbos right here. So it's called Turbo Direct Intake, TDI, 2.5 liter, uh, brand new fan. I re rebuilt the alternator as well, that was part of it. I'll look at the list and I'll attach it with this video as a separate thing so you can look over everything that was done on it. And then with my repairs in total, what I've put into this is over $2,400. Um, I'm gonna start her up for everybody. So I'm sure you guys already know because it's a diesel, you just wait for the glow pucks to heat up for a couple seconds. So it idles really nicely, it shifts really nicely, it drives really nicely. This has been my everyday vehicle over here, and I am transporting it back to the States. So um, I've got about 15 people that this email is going out to who are seriously interested in it, I guess. I have had a couple offers so far, so I'm just going to kind of wait and uh, take from the highest bidder if you're serious about it then I definitely need to know. You can email me with questions. Um, I can give you my cell phone number, but here in Ireland, I don't really use emails the best way. So I could try calling you as well. I'd be happy to do that or Skype with you or something like that um, if you want to. So we'll go for a drive in a little bit. Let me show you the engine. Uh, 
I'm just driving the Defender to show you. It's got five speeds, and uh, I'm at four right now. I think the turbo kicks in right around here because it makes it a little bit easier to drive. So it shifts well. Um, this engine runs smoothly, no problem whatsoever. Um, so we've got vents here. If you open them up, you'll be able to feel a lot of air. There's two vents, one for the passenger, one for the driver. On the outside, I'll show you as well. Um, this driver side window, it doesn't roll down and up the best, so I tend to keep it up. And then just use the vents if I want air on the driver's side. These are the two vents right here that open, provide airflow, driver's side. Roof rack is good, galvanized, rust free. Again, an aluminum top. Access ladder is back here for getting up on it. Side of the Defender, this is the, the dash. You can see the 103,671 miles. Uh, you got your horn over here on this side. And you've got lights as well. Different things, it's a three seater you can see. Here, you got the clutch, brake, gas, emergency brake, shifter, high, low. This is the fuse uh, box. I have the cover for it. I just wanted to take it off to show everybody. This is where the fuses are located. Three seater, I don't know if you can see there. Um, this is, I have a Haynes manual that I use to do uh, most of the work. It's pretty good, it walks you through it all. This is the inside covering and then to the back here. So all of this stuff, this this is like old tape. This brown stuff is like old tape. And that was, there was, there's was carpeting. You can, everywhere you see the brown tape back here, there was carpeting on the walls and it was just so old, I just tore it off. Um, it needed to come out. So that's something that, I mean, you could get plastic inserts for the Defenders or you could do carpeting if you want. It's starting to rain. I don't know if you can hear that or not, but anyways. This is some of the inside surface rust. So there's different areas that have this surface rust on it that are not aluminum. Back here in the two corners, you can see. And at some point the Defender was this lighter blue and then it was redone and painted the darker blue. You kind of see the contrast there. Um, surface rust. And it has steel plate down here. You can put in, you know, it's got these back seats that really aren't like, they're not intact or anything. They just come off. But a lot of defenders will have like fold down seats or something. So, or you could turn it into an actual belt bench with like seat belts if you wanted to do that. The windows open and close, sliding windows in the back here. Then those top windows there. This is the ceiling. At some point, there was some type of carpeting on the ceiling you can kind of see by the old tape. So, all that. All this stuff, you know, it just comes off. I, I just haven't, I haven't done anything with it. Um, like I said, you can put carpeting on it if you wanted to, or if you wanted to do plastic on the inside, I, you know, I don't know. Um, it was something I was gonna work on. There are some speakers in here. I don't have anything set up at the moment. Uh, there's some wires to hook up a, uh, if you wanted to hook up a CD player or a radio or something, you could do that. I'll try to show you the underside. I don't know if you can see the chassis. Tires. This back muffler broke off. The back part of this muffler broke off. So it's something that I mean, maybe you want to replace it. Maybe not. I don't know. The chassis itself is good. There is one rust hole which I'll show you. And the chassis go on these things. I don't know if you can see or not. There's one rust hole about the size of a quarter somewhere in there. I'm not able to get in there with my with my face, but this this is called a uh, the back plate. The back plate. This back plate is is rusted out. It's uh, it's about five hundred dollar repair. So if you wanted to tow something, you'd probably want to replace this back plate here. I have new these uh, mud flaps here. I've got brand new ones for this. So that's gone on that side, and this one the flap came off. But I've got brand new uh, ones to install comes with the car. This is the back door here. The very bottom of the door must have been bent somehow. The very bottom of the door kind of comes out a little bit at the end so it's not a complete seal. I don't know if you can see that but it comes out a little bit at the end. So 
there's no problem opening it up. And then we're back here into the back. I've got some stuff. These are like some old parts. Well, my fishing pole, but these are some old parts. Uh, here is the CD player. You know, so this is an old parts uh, box with the old fan, timey belt, some brake fluid, uh, different things that I used when I was working on it. I think I have an extra air filter in here. Um, glow plug box, etc. Decent amount of space back here. And there's definitely a lot of light because of all the windows. Surface rust here, right where the door closes. When you close the door, it, you have to close it with force. You just shut it like that, so it's not a big deal. It's something to be aware of. I have a back tire for this. I think I mentioned that in a previous video. And uh, you need to get a couple more bolts for it. This is the only bolt, so I'll get another two bolts for it while I'm here. Driver's door window has trouble rolling up and down. Uh, my guess is some part inside the door is rusted, so I just leave it. I just leave it rolled up all the time, and then you can always exit out of the driver's door. That's not a problem, but I, it has trouble opening and closing as well. So you've got the window, and then trouble opening and closing just from the outside. There's a something must be broken on, on one side, the inside of the door. So I always usually go on the passenger side, and then you can you can you know just open it up from the driver's side something to be aware of um, we've got chassis on the other side I don't know if you can see it so it's a solid chassis at some point there was some type of a rubber coating on it or something that I, I think that's why it's in such good condition to be honest with you chassis are something on defenders that have been known to go on, and this one has a good chassis which is kind of more rare for a 1985. I don't know if you can see or not. Uh, I mean, there's basic surface rust on it, but the chassis is solid. Over here, I don't know what this piece is called, but this piece has been known to go on Defenders as well. It's completely rust-free. The whole body and everything, I mean, overall, yeah, there's rust on it because it's a 1985, but gosh, this thing's in good condition um, rust-wise. So the surface rust is the biggest thing you're dealing with. You've got right here, you can see how this seal is kind of cracked. So no water gets through or anything, but it's something that, you know, is going to need replacement if you're wanting to redo the whole thing. I've got the driver's side windshield wiper. I, if, I, if I have a chance, I'll get a second window wiper over here. Uh, if not, those, these are pretty easy to order and pretty basic and definitely inexpensive. So I've just shown you a video of everything with the Land Rover. All the areas that need a little bit of work on it and all the great things about it. It is a really good truck. And basically this video is going out to, I think I mentioned, I have 15 different people who are interested in the Chicagoland area, in the Ohio, Pennsylvania area, and in the New York, New Jersey area. So what I need from you is I'm willing to, you know, drive it a certain distance. So whoever I honestly know is the most interested in it, then that's the person of that region I'll drive it to and see. I understand you're not going to purchase it until you see it in person. I get that. I have given you a very honest description of anything. I haven't left out anything. You've seen all the areas that will require attention if you're going to do it up. Um, if you have questions, we can set up a Skype meeting, but basically I'm not going to be driving the Lambo over to 15 different people. I need to know which one of you is the most serious about purchasing it and the most interested in it, and then we'll work from there. You can make me an offer, but I really need somebody to get back to me with specifics. You can ask me specific questions, I'll ask and I'll answer you specifically. We can set up a Skype conversation. I can send you more pictures if you're interested in one specific area. Because when this thing lands, and I think it's going to go into the Baltimore port. I had told some people the New York port, but my sister lives in Baltimore, and apparently to get through customs might take a day or two, so I don't want to spend the night in a hotel in New York. So I'm going to stay with my sister in Baltimore. So I'm going to ship it to the Baltimore port. Like I said, I don't mind driving it somebody or me, somebody halfway to check it out, that sort of thing. But I really need to know who out there receiving this out of the 15 people is the most serious and who can make me an offer so I know what direction to head in. Um, you've got my contact information. I look forward from hearing from each of you guys. The other thing is this, you know, if nobody's serious, that's fine, but let me know because I have got a few potential candidates here in Ireland. I would sell it here in Ireland, but I don't think that's what I'm going to do. And they're a lot harder to get in the U.S. basically, and because this thing is older than 25 years old, it's 30 years old, I kind of have a fast track into it with the customs and import papers and everything. So I'm willing to do that if I know that somebody's actually interested in it. So let me know, all right? Thanks.